Hello and welcome to lesson 15.4 in the Atlas tutorial series. Uh, lesson 15.4 is simply a continuation of lesson 15.3, which got to uh, running a little bit too long. In lesson 15.3, we created a dinosaur um, or imported a dinosaur into our Atlas world. And we used class level methods to teach that dinosaur how to roar and growl with appropriate sound effects. Uh, we still want to teach this dinosaur how to walk, so that's how we're going to kick off today, uh, by adding a walking animation with appropriate sound effects. And then the whole purpose of this series of video, or of Lesson 15.3 and Lesson 15.4, we're going to export that object and see that the sound effects come along with it into whatever world we choose to import it into. So let's go ahead and get started with the continuation of Lesson 15.3 the walking animation for our dinosaur object. The last thing I want to do is just create a walking animation. Again, this might be a little bit crude, but uh, it's just to give one more example on the screen here. In order to do this, I'm going to use poses. So let's uh, give him a right step pose. Go into my add object screen and turn him to face me. Now using the turn forwards and backwards, I want to take his whole leg and ro rotate, whoops, make sure to turn effect subparts on. Take the whole leg and rotate it just forwards and backwards. Move it up just a bit. And then we'll take his kind of shin area here and move that up as well. And take the foot and angle that down so that it looks kind of more like a, a, a small step. Now let's take the uh, dinosaur and kind of turn him to the left, and, and that looks about right for a, a step forward for the dinosaur here. So since I have that set, let's select our T-Rex, capture pose, and we'll call this step left, since he's stepping with his left foot. Now that I have step left set up, we'll go ahead and put him back into the standing position, and do the same thing for his other foot. So take the entire dinosaur, turn him towards us, Effect subparts and turn forwards and backwards. Move his leg forward just a smidge. Have that kick out his shin and then move the foot down. And this looks like it uh, might be okay. So let's see what this looks like from the side. And maybe move the shin out just a little bit more. I think that's going to end up being too far, but let's see. Now that looks about right. So we have uh, a good step there for this pose. Select the entire T-Rex. Capture this pose. This will be called step right. And now we can move him back into the standing position. And we have the, the poses that we're going to need to create a, uh, an okay walking animation. So the way we're going to do that is go into the T-Rex. Select methods, and we'll call this new method walk forward. And the walk forward method is going to be a little bit more complicated than the others, but it won't be too bad. Now, in listening to the sound, the footstep occurs almost immediately, which means I need the pose for left step to complete before I start playing the sound. So we'll start by having the dinosaur step left. And we're just going to test this. So disable both of these lines of code and run only walk forward. So let's go ahead and hit play here. And that looks like it's going to be OK. Let me move the dinosaur over just a little bit so he stays in frame. Um, the next thing I need to do is add the sound effect. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have the sound effect play in a do together loop with the rest of the code. Uh, that way I can still control the rest of the animation while the sound is playing. One of the problems you might run into is sometimes if, if you don't use um, a do together loop, the entire sound file will play before the animation completes. Since we don't want that, we'll have the footsteps play sort of independent while other things are going on in a do together loop. So we have the sound effect playing while the uh, T-Rex is setting his pose. And this will give us some more direct control over the uh, sound effect. In fact, if I play this now, I bet the sound effect will play a little too early. And much, much, much too early there. So I'm going to add another do and order statement and have the sound play. 
And just to keep this straight, we'll add a comment here and say this block controls the audio. And then this block right here, this block controls the animation. Now that I have the audio in its own separate block, I can throw a wait command on here and, and try and line up the sounds a little bit better. So we'll wait one second before we play the sound effect. And it just needs to be adjusted a little bit. Let's maybe try and see how 1.25 seconds work. That's still not quite right. Um, I think I might have even needed uh, 0.75. I think I went the wrong way there. Let's see what 0.75 looks like. I, I want the first thump to occur right after the foot hits. And that looks about right there. So we have this wait time before our sound plays and now we can start doing the rest of the animation. So to do the rest of the animation I'm going to need another nested do together here because I want the dinosaur to move forward while returning to the standing position. So in this do together we'll have the dinosaur return to the standing position while moving forward and I think two meters will be about right so let's try and move forward two meters and see how this looks. And what will happen is the T-Rex will step left. As his foot hits, it should play the first part of the sound effect, and then the T-Rex will return to the standing position while moving forward. So that looked okay. We just need to get the next part of the walking animation done. Of course, we have the pose set up for that already, so let's set the pose now to T-Rex step right. And in a do together statement, we'll set him back to the standing pose while moving forward. So T Rex move forward two meters. Now we'll definitely take some adjustment here to get the sounds lined up, but this should be pretty close to the walk forward animation that we're looking for. And that first step is going just a little bit too fast, so let's set the duration on this to. Uh, maybe 1.2 seconds and see if we can line the sound up a little bit better. Make it take this leg a little bit longer before it would have hit the ground. And for our example, I think that looks pretty good. Now that we have the T-Rex set up the way we want, we have all these uh, different methods that have associated sound effects. <laughs> We can now export our T-Rex to any world that we want, and that's going to be the Lesson 15.3 Challenge Program, so let's go ahead and get this dinosaur into a better world. Now that we have this T-Rex set up the way we want, we have all these different methods that we can use. Um, roar, growl, walk forward. So we have the big roar there. We have a, a lower growl that we programmed during the last video, and now we're finished with our walk forward animation. Just like we did for um, the, the previous lessons, all we need to do to export this guy is to right click on him, save the object, and let's go ahead and put him into our Alice 2.4 new objects, and we'll call him Advanced T-Rex. So now when I want to import a T-Rex into a future world, I don't necessarily need to use the standard T-Rex. So let's say we wanted to put him in a snow world. Uh, let's go ahead and hit new. I am going to save this so that I can access him later. Or, or space world. Let's put the T-Rex in space. So we have our space world here. And then I might spend some time adding some backgrounds. or uh, Maybe we'll do that right now. Let's go ahead and import a billboard. Um, I have a... a uh, background sitting here that I think will work. It's a prehistoric background. So let's use prehistoric jungle. Awesome. Let's go ahead. Eh, this is going to turn away from a moon world really quickly here. We're going to turn it to face the camera and adjust it so that 
further in the background and resize it. So that looks good. Now all of a sudden this ground doesn't look right, so let's add a new color to the ground. Um, we want a dark green, so I'm going to go with maybe this green color here. And we could probably even go a little bit darker than that, so select other. Let's maybe use like that dark green color. Eh, not perfect, but definitely something we can work with. And now let's add our T-Rex into this world. So this is a new world, doesn't have a T-Rex, and if I simply add this T-Rex here, holy cow, that's a uh, that's huge. We're going to have to back off just a little bit and adjust our background accordingly. Wow. We can see this new T-Rex object here can't do anything interesting. If I go to methods, I've got none of those methods. If I look at the sounds, there are no sounds for this T-Rex. I mean, he's, we'd have to start over. But of course, if we go file and import, and then go to our new T-Rex object, the advanced T-Rex. The advanced T-Rex gets moved into the world. We can position him as we do all the other objects. However, this T-Rex has all of our poses, all of our methods, and most importantly, all of our sounds imported with him. So now in my first method, I can simply have him roar, walk forward, and then growl. And now all these animations that I presumably spent a lot of time on can go to any world that I want to use a T-Rex in. So it kind of incentivizes you to make as realistic looking an animation as you can, and you could literally spend hours tweaking these animations so that they look a little bit better and look really realistic and know that you're not going to lose all of your work. You can spend the time matching up sound files so that they look right. You can take the time to animate very small subparts to add subtle realism to your world, because if you export the object, all of that goes with it, including the sounds. Now this isn't much different than the other exporting stuff that we've done, so there is no challenge program for Lesson 15.3 and 15.4. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we went over how to export sounds. It's probably self-explanatory, and it may not have been worth doing an entire video on, but I think it's a useful feature and something that is important in Alice, so I definitely wanted to take the time to look at it. But um, because it's not that different than exporting objects that we did in 15.1 and 15.2. There is no challenge program. Uh, just make sure that you have a working T-Rex and try to import him into a new world. And you can practice this with any objects because it works on any object in Alice. Of course, if you had any problems or questions or something that you weren't able to do, leave those in the comments and I will be happy to help you out any way that I can to get your programs and animations working. Uh, thank you so much for your support of the Alice tutorial series. I uh, look looking forward to the next video. Uh, thanks and have a great day.